man we're live heck yeah yeah so we're we're a little behind i pulled a teague fenwick we, <laughs> we're kind of talking a little bit but um just want everybody to know we are joined by great eric barnett the the wisconsin homegrown badger it's good to be here yeah it's awesome to have you in the house man oh, yeah. so i think you're the third athlete i've had in the house nice otherwise i have zach here all the time <laughs> yeah. wisconsin grappler but yeah. uh yeah so dude I, I mean it's great to have you here it's great to be able to talk to you again i know we had you on once before so we kind of at that point we dove into like the beginning you know like yep. things that you're doing before but it, and we'll yeah. dab a little bit into some of that yep. kind of building into just your four-year you know career and then plus the the things that we just talked about the uh, outside projects you have going mm -hmm. on now mm -hmm. um so let's uh let's kind of jump into that you know with high school wrestling and I, and I think i asked uh another athlete this the other day what when you were going from high school and you were already, i mean watching you with the bianchis and stuff up at mm -hmm. kangaroo and you guys always going hard right mm -hmm. so the tempo you guys had what that transition kind of going to college was that tough kind of going from a regular high school practice to a college practice yeah i mean the pace of it was definitely different um yeah. the expectation was definitely different um and then get my butt kicked is a little bit harder <laughs> makes the practices a little bit longer yeah. um yeah than than in high school high school i was usually usually always holding my own right so getting right. that college room right away and you know, couldn't get out from bottom and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely made the practices a lot harder. Well, and I want to touch on that a little bit because I talked again, Rich, about that. You know, your your style of wrestling evolved a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a little skeptical. Mm -hmm. You going into college, I was oh, like, yeah. I don't know how this crackdown stuff's gonna work. You yeah. know, kind of going into it. And I, I, obviously, we watched you as it, in, as you evolved. You saw things not working out well as far mm -hmm. as in a couple matches here and there. Mm -hmm. But then we noticed the difference. You were starting to pick your bottom game, especially is when mm -hmm. I talked to Chris about. I was like, man, he was like snapping out. Like after a second year of being in college, like yeah. he's putting the work in. So we yeah. obviously knew that you were willing to put in whatever it took to make mm -hmm. these either all American status or getting on the podium, whatever it took. Right. Right. So with with some of the things that you learned that you were able to like, was it leaps and bounds beyond what high school was the knowledge that a you're getting from some of the athletes but your coaching staff as well yeah. was that a huge detriment to the things that that for brought sure. you up yeah for sure i mean being able to get those feels every single day in the room too like you know dudes are throwing different things at you and obviously one of my main partners was seth gross yeah so you never know what he's gonna do <laughs> yeah. and being able to get that feel you know yeah. day in day out learning from those things and asking a lot of questions and playing around positions and stuff like that was yeah huge to be able to kind of progress in those positions especially with bottom i yeah. mean my i was always scared to shoot my freshman year because i was like well if i get taken down yeah after i shoot i ain't getting out like <laughs> i wasn't getting out for many dudes so sure. um that was like the main focus when covid shut everything down yeah you know i was training on my own and getting in you know whatever room i could find and yeah they'd allow us in yeah was like main focus was bottom being creative um you know it's not super orthodox stuff that i do from bottom <laughs> It's I, not. Think that's, I think that's why it works right sometimes it's doing random you know fat man rolls and yep. stuff like that and just hitting stuff you know out of nowhere and um being creative from bottom too and not so you know solid in the position or anything sure. and that's you know part of why i'm dangerous too i can pin dudes so yeah from bottom or and it's know, happened position, right? we watched it happen oh, yeah. you know so yeah. that's that was kind of the fun part about just a you know, everybody, like I said, from high school, the naysayers, the, oh, he's not going to do this. But I, I, as an athlete, you know, when I was young, I changed, you know, mm -hmm. so I was like, I had my doubts. But at the same time, though, too, I was like, he's going into a completely different environment. You right. know, he's he's going to learn from some guys that know what's going on and mm -hmm. be able to pick some stuff up. Now, did I know that you were going to be the guy that was willing to listen to that, right. you know, kind of thing? So that first year was kind of everybody's kind of feeling it out like it because we were watching, mm -hmm. you know especially fox valley right, you know, right. we're, we're watching because we're excited to see one of our yeah. guys in the big 10 so was that a little scary going to the big 10 though i mean that's a you know, we're talking about a tough conference man yeah i mean it's the premier conference of wrestling right yeah. i mean big 10 day in day out especially you know 
January one hits and big 10 season starts. And it's, you know, next yeah. two and a half months of wrestling. I mean, I've last year, I remember I went in the streak five matches straight of top 10 guys in the country. And it was just absolutely insane. Wow. Like that, that it's just crazy. Like you're not getting that in any other conference. So, yeah, I mean, it was kind of scary in a way, knowing you had to perform week in, week out. Like, yeah. you don't have any, like, quote unquote, easy matches. Right, right. You're not running in there and you're like, yeah, I know I'm going to pin this dude in a minute or whatever it is. So. Well, kind of expound on that. Talk about the mental side of it, because, I mean, I I don't know. I can't remember when mental mindset came around. But, like, I mean, you guys obviously have coaching staffs and guys that have been through the ringer and, and done things like this. Mm -hmm but daunting on your own right it, you know because you're on yeah. the map by like we always say by yourself yeah how what what in kind of a mental side of it as you start to work through a lot of things were you able to kind of work through it on your own did you have to reach out for help like how did you do that as far as getting through some of those tough spots yeah i mean having teammates that kind of you know older than me at the time that kind of walked me through it and just i think the main focus was not getting too high on wins and not getting too low on losses because yeah. they're, they're going to come. I mean, there's right. you know, one dude who never lost a match in college. So, right. I mean, not getting too high on the wins, but definitely like, the focus is not getting too low on the losses. Like yeah. if you lose on a Friday, you better be ready to go on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, we look at the NCAA tournament, how crazy it is now. Yeah. I mean, you got 29 seeds placing and stuff like that. Like, knowing that you have an opportunity so i always say like three days and like even the big 10 tournament like it's fun it's crazy yeah. and all that but really don't matter as long as you qualify for nationals yeah. if you want to be as high of a seat as you can but still doesn't solidify anything for you right right so, okay definitely definitely not getting too low on the losses and going from there yeah so with, with covid you talked about as far as having to get out and, and trying to find places to train mm -hmm. were you finding yourself back home or were you traveling across the country like where were some of the places you had to get out to, to because I, I think each state was kind of different, right? Yep. Um, obviously depending on your, your, your democratic or Republican side of it, yeah. whoever decided to deal with things in a certain way, did you find yourself mainly staying at home during that COVID period? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I was home the whole time. Um, training. Genrich was willing to open up a room. For oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. 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 And yeah, Chris and Keegan, Keegan yeah. trained with Keegan a lot and, nice. and, uh, I was putting a lot of miles in, not lifting a lot, just focusing a lot on wrestling. Yeah. And it was really nice to just, it was fun. I mean, a lot of people hated COVID, but I freaking loved it. Gave right. me another chance to kind of recuperate from the college season, got my butt kicked and kind of zero you know, in on things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had lost a lot for the first time in my life. So it was kind of like, oh my gosh, am I built for this? Like, this, That's is, this is tough. So kind of was, was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of nice to like go home and be like, all right, let's take a step back. Yeah. Let's, retry this i'll come in totally new yeah and uh yeah no it was good just finding rooms around you know the appleton area fox valley and yeah and uh dialing in on things and trying to get as good as possible so when you when you came back home and, and were things kind of questionable during covid like did you guys kind of wonder obviously they canceled the championships but mm -hmm. were you guys kind of up in the air like ncaa didn't know if they're going to have a season or you know the next season especially mm -hmm. were were you guys kind of on the end of well it doesn't matter let's just let's just go somewhere and wrestle no matter what and kind of blocked out the news noise i guess yeah. essentially yeah so were, were you guys as a team trying to find places too did you guys kind of gather up be like hey i got this spot mm -hmm. come on over and let's train and i can get you know we can get four or five guys yeah i think like in in the fox valley we we're just finding whatever dudes wanted to work out and yeah. whatever and just trying to find partners that were willing to you know go out and you know risk covid right whatever. yeah right. well it's snitches man right yeah. like i mean there's and people that are willing to tell that. on people like we oh they're doing that. this you yeah know? yeah no we oh. dealt with that for sure yeah I mean, we had our you know out in appleton we had a room shut down for a little bit because too many people were in there it's like dude <laughs> if we're uh, i like if we want to risk it yeah. we'll risk it right we'll yeah take care of ourselves and yeah what do you want healthy. barrels of bleach and defense soap <laughs> sitting outside right. like what's the problem right. you know right. so right. And, bubble wrap. and i know a lot of people were pretty cautious either way you right. know i mean no one wanted to get sick and exactly. you don't want to get other people sick so i'm I know everybody, at least on the wrestling side, was trying to do as much as they could to stay healthy because mm -hmm. you didn't know if the next season was coming up right away right. or not, you know? Right. So with with the kind of the COVID as you guys got through it, what was that COVID year like for you guys once they said, okay, we can wrestle, but we're going to have cardboard cutouts sitting in seats <laughs> and we're going to have this. What 
was that weird? I mean, was it just kind of a, like, why are we bothering with this part of it? Just have us wrestle. <laughs> yeah. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was definitely strange. I have cardboard cutouts. Yeah. I think it was like more funny than anything. Like <laughs> we didn't need that. Like that, that's just crazy. But uh, yeah, no, yeah. it was, it was, I mean, it was just wrestling. It, it kind of made it easier to just show up and wrestle. Like, yeah. It's not anything bigger than it is. It's just wrestling matches, almost pretending like you're in the room wrestling a match. Like, there's nobody there. Yeah. Like right. everybody will see the result this time, but like, yeah, just going out and wrestling and there's, I mean, it was obviously real low energy. Yeah. Hands like, raised 10 people cheering yeah. for you. Well, I don't even know at the time if they could raise your hand, you had to like oh, do it yourself right. or whatever. It's like, and I, I've not, I'm just like, oh, I'll just get off the mat. Yeah. Like I'm done. I remember like probably my, you know, biggest upset or whatever I ever had was pinning Devin Schroeder when I was 0-2 on the year. Yeah. He was number two in the country. I went and stuck him. Yep. And there were like eight dudes in the fa- in, in the stands. I was like, what the heck, man? We're slow when I need a man. Yeah, like, right, for real. <laughs> right. If this place was packed, it would have been so cool. But <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys missed out on it quite a bit. I mean, yeah. just, uh, I guess, I guess on the fandom side of it, you know, mm-hmm. really, you guys still got to compete. Um, practices must have been pretty weird. Didn't you guys have to do like temperature tests and stuff just coming in the building? So, yeah, we were... Dude, I think like through the PCR, the rapid testing and all that. And then we had to do like spit tests and all. Dude, I was getting tested like nine, ten times a week. Like it was it was insane. It was. Yeah, I think it was before every single practice we came in as a rapid test, two spit tests a week and then like a nose test or something like that. Where's like, Usado when you need him, right? Yeah, right. Right. Seriously. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Yeah. So I, I get it. They're you know, trying to stay yeah. open and everything, but I know. Yeah. And, and the schools too, they're trying to make sure that they keep whatever they got going yep. on. Cause the who, liabilities. all the liabilities. Yeah. yeah. So with, um, with that COVID year kind of, you know, winding down, things were normalizing, I guess, for lack of a better term Yep. for you guys. And then the tournaments, you know, everything kind of came back around. Mm-hmm. Did you guys, and only because of COVID, did you guys kind of find yourselves maybe, I wouldn't say refocusing, but, um, regaining some traction to being a normal type of season because there are mm-hmm. pressures that come around with, I mean, you guys have TV schedules to go by right. and, and everything like that. I mean, were pressures just a little bit easier than once the COVID stuff just, you're like, all right, finally a normal season. I can, yeah. I can kind of let my wings flap a little yep. bit here. You know, yep. was yeah. that, uh, was that something you guys embraced as far as like, let's just get back to normal. Cause I mean, I can just go into the store, man. I didn't even want to go to the store. Right. You know, and I'm, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, kind of a people person mm-hmm. man i sure enjoyed six foot distancing <laughs> yeah right. tell you that much right, right. <laughs> if we could have just no kept kidding. that for a little bit yeah. that'd have been great yeah um what, what was that what was kind of the mindset once this covid thing lifted was it just the same thing just get back to business back to business it, it definitely made it like covid with no fans in the stands and you know kind of just showing up we didn't know what was going to happen so we just kept showing up and wrestling and yeah. it definitely like progressed like you know the next three years after that in my career like just being more relaxed, like, you know, it is just another match and just, you know, trying to keep that mindset, even though there are fans in the stands now and people watching a little bit more, whatever yeah. it may be. But yeah, definitely helped me like relax. Was that your first, that was the first all American year for you, wasn't yep, it? Yep, that COVID season. Sick. Yeah. yeah, it was sweet. So was sweet. let's kind of expound on that a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, obviously the the environment and, and stuff like that was different, but the competition was still the same. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. you're still going on the mat and wrestling a guy, mm-hmm. which I don't think you guys had to wear masks. Did you to compete? No. Okay. Cause no. that was, we had to do that here with the high school kids, yep. which made absolutely no sense. No, it's crazy. Not whatsoever. So at least you guys didn't have to go through that. But mm-hmm. what the, with your all American season there, did, did you find yourself maybe just kind of a little more like, all right, this is okay. Mm-hmm. Everything that we've been doing is fu- just fine. Yeah. Yep. My mindset's great. Yeah. What were you, what were some of your thoughts after that season accomplishing that mm-hmm. and then focusing coming up to the next season? Yeah. I mean, I think I went to that tournament, the 19 seed, obviously nobody imagined I was going to all American. Yeah. I didn't really know what was going to happen either. You don't know. First NCAA tournament too. So I was like, I've never been here, you know, yeah. pretty crazy and chaotic, but yeah, once I got the job done, yeah. um, got on the podium. Then after that, it was, it was kind of a thought of like, dang, I can like, really pursue a title like this is like realistic like i'm not trying to like yeah keep my starting job i'm not trying to you know right. win a couple matches at the big 10 tournament like i'm like you know I'm really doing this shit. Pretty, i'm right i'm doing it <laughs> yeah. yeah especially after my freshman year i think i don't know exactly what my record was but maybe i want to say somewhere around like 15 and 10 mm-hmm. and i was like damn 
over yeah. 500. Yeah, over, over 500. 500. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's sweet. That's sweet. <laughs> but in the Big Ten, it's like, yeah, over 500 is like, okay, like you might qualify for nationals through this through this bracket and everything. And yeah. my, when it got canceled that first year, I didn't qualify. Like they canceled the tournament. Yeah. And I was like, yep. I, I didn't even qualify. Yeah. So, so whatever. Like, right. <laughs> whatever. Right. Yeah. So I was like, dang, I can like, I can really do this thing. I still got you know, potentially three years left. And obviously yeah. ended up taking that extra COVID year, but yeah. I was like, dang, I got three more years left to try and win a title. Let's talk about that for a second. Let's yeah. talk about this whole date and fix upsetness about people. He's a five-time <laughs> conference champ. I mean, I, I, I under I listen to both sides and I kind of hear, you know, I understand what some people are saying, but at the same point though, too, like if you're a kid in college and they're giving you another opportunity, mm-hmm. try and tell me you're not taking it. Right. right. So right. W- was there any question in your mind that when they decided to give you guys that, that you'd take that, that COVID year? Yeah, I didn't really know. And again, especially before I won, I was like, you know, trying to figure out what I was going to do with my right. life. Cause I was like, man, I'm not very good. Like compared to these other dudes, like, yeah. I was like, I'm going to have to like, you know, get a job soon. <laughs> like I was like, yeah, I got I'm going to work a nine to five, like forever. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was kind of like, I was on pace to graduate in four years. Um, and then after that, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll take it and kind of lengthened out my, you know, grad plan and all that. Okay. So you could, made, so did you educationally, did you have to spread classes out? Like, okay, did. this one I'll take, but I'll wait for this one yep. over here. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cause that's something that a lot of these kids don't understand just going into college. Mm-hmm. How am I going to balance my class structure? Things like yep. that. Then you get COVID thrown at you, and now yep. you get a whole other year. Yeah. So what? What is? What was your major? What is your major? I should Personal say. finance, and then I got a certificate in entrepreneurship. Nice. Yep. Nice. You're gonna be a fucking businessman. I oh yeah. Smell it already. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So with with kind of with all that balance, um, were you? Because I mean, you hear about what was it Brooks or someone saying? He's like, I don't really like school. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Which I get it. Like, right. I totally understand. Yeah. Was that kind of like your thought at first? Like, man. It's a, I go to school another year yeah but to me it's like man i get to wrestle another year yeah. this is awesome right. so you right. kind of make the like one season a little easier so that way you're like class loads not so heavy over on this side or yeah so i mean um lengthening it out i took extra classes too more okay. electives and stuff wow. like that so not like super tough classes and yeah. like that but uh yeah i've always told people if i if i didn't go to college or like wrestle yeah I probably when i went to college right because like this whole time i've been taking i took 45 classes that I didn't really want to take, but right. you know, I did them, passed them, you know, did what I needed to do. But you that's, know, I, yeah, that, I'm, I'm right there with them on. That's you know, the, exactly like where I'd be at too. You yeah. know, like it, like I don't know if I want to go to school, man, but you know yeah. what? I'm gonna wrestle another year. I'm just gonna maybe I'll take maybe Spanish over here, <laughs> yeah. maybe some cooking classes oh, here, yeah. but a little art class. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can expand your horizons on certain <laughs> things, <laughs> right. Right. right? Right. So with the with some of the COVID that you know the the time that you got to spend and. You got your first All American that year. Mm-hmm. What was your focus then? I mean, because like you said, you're starting to tell yourself, "I can do this, man." Like, mm-hmm. there's an opportunity for me to expound on here. Right. What was your thought going into that? That I will call it uh, after COVID. Um. Yeah, I think just keeping along, right, knowing that I can win, and the confidence kind of helped prop- propel me yeah. for the future year. And and uh, and not a lot changed training. I just kept the okay. same, like kept working hard you know yeah. um a lot of mat time just trying to pick Seth's brain pretty much you know 24 7 every time i sure. could in the summer and yeah and uh every time i came back home to finding dudes that i could pick their brain that i don't see very much yeah. and, and try and be more creative and kind of go from there but yeah the confidence that i got from that was was huge to propel me right forward. Now. Okay. So as far as the, the progress then you, I mean, obviously practices went on and you guys got to get back into class. How, how actually, how quickly were you guys able to get back into the classes? Don't mind the French bulldog barking up there. It's kind of fun. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> how, how, how was that kind of transition that was it like, okay, only certain classes you can go in person and mm-hmm. what was it kind of a weird mix? Yeah. So that even during that COVID season, I only had one class period that I went in person for and we had to it was a small discussion group in a huge lecture hall we had yeah. to spread way out Holy and God. whatever yeah it was like 12 people in a 300 seater lecture room you're up in the back corner yeah i'm like <laughs> i got something <laughs> right no but there was a lot of online classes and and i think they've you know i haven't done the math or looked into it but I, yeah. I, it looks like they've 
added a lot more online options for classes too. Oh, they, they've make held it on easier. to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, I'm I'm all online this semester. No kidding. All online. That's yeah. awesome. And we get dudes. I mean, obviously, the the hope is to be all online, not having to show up at any certain times. So, yeah. Yeah. That's always the the first option for our guys and nice. making it easier. You know, as an athlete and the the time management side of it. Being able to do online classes is huge. I was going to ask about that because that was another. Not not only does the the level of like um, competition change, but mm-hmm. like your time management. Because yeah. I mean, high school kids in general have a hard enough time balancing mm-hmm. real, you know, their life with sports and then with school. Right. Because you guys are such a like at a high level, mm-hmm. and you're and obviously you're going to Madison, no slouch school. Right. So what, how was that a big struggle going into college with it that was, management? It was for sure. My freshman year, I definitely struggled with that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, getting all the work in, obviously, yeah, college classes aren't easy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's very few that are, you know, kind of cakewalks or whatever, and right. trying stuff out. But yeah, it was definitely hard to like manage my time of going to classes, getting my study hours and get my workouts in, yeah. cutting weight, you know, doing all those things. I still got to eat, do lunch, like all those things add up and. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy to, you know, and living in a dorm, travel time, all that. Yeah, it was it was pretty chaotic that, that first year. Do you find yourself, was it uh, classroom, wrestling room, classroom, wrestling room? It was, yeah. That's what it, it was, was really. It was, yeah, it was like morning workout, straight to class, eat, you know, maybe have another class. Yeah. And then you work out again. And then it's like, oh, 5 p.m. Now I got three hours of homework that I have to do. Yeah. Like, and then, you know bedtimes at nine because you got 5 45 a.m workout or whatever it was you know that freshman year and were you ever a video crazy. game kid i don't know i was never good at them <laughs> i played them i played them not a ton though but yeah i i like playing video games i get liam lost uh at the end of the day he comes home he does his homework he does all right mm-hmm. I, i'd say he's a 3.6 3.7 you, you know kind of kid but he comes home and it's like he disappears mm-hmm these kids with gaming, like he's, he's buddies with Peyton, like, Lee, yeah. you know, so yeah. those Lee boys are all about being oh, yeah. online gaming and stuff. And as soon as it, I'll go up in like first 10 minutes, he's come, comes home and I go upstairs and look and he's up there mm-hmm. doing homework. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden half hour later, you're here, whatever. He's like yelling at someone on a video <laughs> game or something like that, you know? So I, I just find it interesting to, to be able to find that balance of, of, cause I don't know how he's going to do it, Cause right. I'm not giving him. He's going to figure it out. I told yep. him figure it out now. Right. You know, try to figure yeah. out some time management. Yeah. I'm pretty harsh with that stuff. Yep. You know, I don't want to. I, I think a lot of things now, especially having him on here mm-hmm. or being out at tournaments, like I'm not giving him help with anything. Yeah. If you got a question, I'm there to guide you. Right. You right. know, kind of thing. How yeah. is that with your parents as far as yeah. like going into college? And I, obviously you're, you're a man, right? Mm-hmm. You, you got to be able to kind of figure things out, but right. you kind of find it like a balance with like, Hey mom, dad, this, I, I'm struggling with this. Yeah. Or did I you, mean, cut, you seem pretty tough. You seem yeah, like you can get I mean, down I, by yourself. They, they let me be independent since I was in middle school. And yeah. a lot of the tournaments when I would travel, I'd just go with other kids and nice. travel with their families. Yeah. And my parents, I'd leave, they'd send me with a couple dollars and mm-hmm. then I'd come back and they'd be like, good job. Or dude, what the heck? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's kind of the balance, but it was a lot of independence and weeks away from my family. Even when I was like 12, 13, like, let me learn to be independent. I definitely think that helped me in college, like trying to figure things out and yeah. definitely a lot of phone calls home. Like, sure. Dude, I don't know what, you know, yeah. a lot of time I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like I suck. <laughs> like there were days I'd come home and like, dude, my body hurts. My grades aren't good right now. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think I'm cut out for this. And they're like, Hey, just keep showing up, keep showing up, yep. get your work done. Get and show up to, yeah. 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 Right. And, yeah. and just keep chugging along. I think that's why, again, why COVID was so good for me to kind of like, rejuvenate and all sure. that and yeah take, like a reset button yeah it really was and kind of a second chance kind of because i was like again i was like dang i don't know i don't know if i'm built for this like this is this is crazy yeah when the covid hit and there were some of those seniors that didn't get that back mm-hmm. and obviously they weren't opted for that year right um were, were you guys in the room kind of like just as disappointed and i mean i, I would imagine tears are being shed you mm-hmm. know as far as that's yeah. tough you yeah. know i mean especially for guys that are going to qualify right you know um right. did were there any types of uh like wants to like i'm just gonna throw it in now kind of thing just because like, of the disappointment you yeah know? not even so much that i'm not made out for this but just the disappointment of what's going on were there guys around you just kind of thinking even you thinking i mm-hmm. i don't know if i want to even do this now it's it's yeah. over with it was yeah it was just so much happened so fast like it was like 
Yeah, I, I think it was on maybe a Thursday, the Thursday before yeah. nationals. And yeah. I remember coming back from class and we had practice at three is maybe two fifteen and I was and everybody's in the room. Oh like, what? I've yeah. never seen that before. And everybody's sitting on the bleachers and Bone was talking to them, like like telling the news, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, yeah, like, that's crazy. And like we had an old team too, so it was like four or five guys, I want to say that their careers are done. Oh, like they're just done. Yeah. And yeah, so so for them and I didn't see, I mean, we got kicked out of the dorms right away. Like we yeah. had to go back home that next day. We're all, we're out of there. So yeah, it wasn't a lot of time to like, be like, dude, how are yeah. you? It was like, you guys didn't right. even get a 30 day eviction you, notice, man. Oh, like- <laughs> right. It was like, luckily I'm only a two hour drive home. These dudes, like some of these dudes didn't live in Cali yeah, and all that. PA like, and everything, yeah, yeah. Right. Like they're, they're traveling away. It's like, I, don't, I didn't see any of those dudes. And man. yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, for me again, it was a good reset. So sure. I yeah. think for a lot of the guys, the young guys, it was like, okay, I learned a lot in my first year. How are we going to come back and change things and yeah. like be able to be better when yeah. we get back and for sure. you know understand the time management that goes into it um, and that's wrestling the and all part. that. That's yeah. the hardest part is that, and that's a kind of one one thing that I worry about is the time management with Liam. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of kind of getting into the swing of things, but you it, it always seems like it, it doesn't matter what school you're at. You, there's always guys that are there that have been through the stuff, you mm-hmm. know, and so you can reach out to them, coaches, things like that. So, all right, COVID, COVID's done. done. We're we're done, done with COVID. Okay, <laughs> so uh, all American. Okay, so we're gonna go into that next year when you got into your um your third season then. Mm-hmm technically third season right. yeah um when you got into that season you all american your eyes around the prize you're like oh, mm-hmm. shit i can i can really pull something off here mm-hmm. were were your like i guess when a guy thinks that and sees the opportunities did your training change did you try to up it were you trying to like i want to maximize this or were you like no what i'm doing is good i'm gonna yeah. keep it just where it's at yeah i think i kind of stuck close to what i was doing um just because you know it worked yeah right? and yeah. uh I want to say I was working, you know, so hard anyways. It was like, yeah. you're, you're trying to find that line of like, cause I think there is still overworking. So it's like, whether you're, you know, working to the point where, and I always go with this too. If I'm doing, you know, five sprints at the end of the practice, are mm-hmm. well, those five sprints like really make me my cardio that much better? I don't know. I can't tell you that right. I'm a doctor or whatever. Scientist right. Say, yeah. But the thing it does for your brain is huge and knowing that you're doing extra work. So just sticking to that and okay you know, hundred pushups, hundred pull-ups, sprints after practice, doing extra stuff, asking questions about technique, yeah. just keeping that the same and, you know, making, and definitely listening to my body, you know, as a freshman, didn't do a very good job of that sophomore year, you know, that COVID year a little bit better. And then, you know, by the year, my, by the time I was a junior, it was yeah. like, okay, I, I know how to listen to my body a lot better now. Yeah. I know when I need treatment, know a lot of like, okay, I feel something right now. I'm not waiting a week until, yeah, and I'm like, okay, this really hurts. And then I got to get it taken care of. So yep. it's always like preventative more than, you know, rehab. So um, trying to be more professional about it, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. but I didn't change a ton. Okay. Didn't change a ton. Yeah. That's good. I, I mean, and I, to me, that makes more sense than trying to, you know, pick something up that's completely different from what mm-hmm. you're doing before and throw, I, I guess, for lack of a better term, a wrench in it or right. whatever, you know, kind of right. switch that up. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. When you kind of got into the season, what were some of your more memorable moments in that season? Yeah, that year it took. So my first and second seasons at the Big Ten tournament, I took 10th. Yeah. I was like, the the year I All American the first time, I was an at large bid. Yep. Didn't actually automatically qualify. Yeah. Um, with the wins early in the year, we assumed I was going to go, but mm-hmm. we didn't know for sure. Right. Um, so a big 10 tournament that third season took second, made finals, obviously automatically qualified. Yep. Um, you know, I think I got maybe a six seed. I think that was, yeah, it's like six or seven. So it was, so it was super solid to, you know, be in that position to kind of be like, okay, you know, I'm supposed to be an all American this year. Yeah. Knowing in, going into the tournament, like knowing who the route should be yeah, everything like that. Um, yeah, just a lot more confidence in there and, um, knowing I've done it before too, because, yeah. Th- this season was the first time I actually won my round of 16 match, never made it past the second round and you know, on the front side. So, um, but the first year lost in round of 16, wrestled three matches back to place. And then that second year was the same thing. Yeah. Lost in the second round. But then it was like, okay, I know what I got to do. I had done it before, you know, it's fucking resilience, man, especially yeah, coming off backside. It's tough. Holy cow. Yeah. Dude. 
<laughs> just a gauntlet. It's tough. I mean, and let's think of it this way. N- number one, you guys get into a college room when you're freshman, when you're young, you're already wrestling guys that are on the top of their game. Right. Now you're getting to a tournament mm-hmm. on top of that. Mm-hmm. That is every guy that's probably just as good as every person that's in your room, if not right. better. And now you got to work your way through the backside of that right. to try to get someone. Holy yeah. crap, man. Yeah. And assuming everybody's peaked and, yeah. um, you know, everybody's banged up too. So, I never use that as an excuse to like, right. okay, like, you know, you didn't place at NCAs because you, you know, had a sprained MCL or something like that. It's like, dude, yeah, everybody's hurt. Yeah, everybody's got something going on. Just cause sure. most of us don't, you know, let it be known. Just like everybody's bitch about it all the right, time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's it. That's the thing that's like with res- college wrestling that I've seen a lot with like the forums and the Twitter sphere and all that. Yeah. It's like, hey, how that dude lose that match? Like, dude, you have no idea what's going on with that dude right now. Like he could be, you know, half dying right now. Yeah. Showing up and wrestling. He's like, guess what I do. Like, yep. you know, I've been there. I know dudes have been there and it's like, it kind of feel like that's your job in a way. right? Well, for sure. Wrestle, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm not calling in sick, you know, for this <laughs> duel and to see what happens. So it's just us fat old guys, you know, sitting out this time. <laughs> like I said before, speculation of, uh, we think we know it all. Right. But right. we don't, we don't know. Right? Yeah. And even, even with me having some of the background I have with athletics, I don't know. Right. You know, even if you guys walk in, one guy could be limping a certain way, but that Mm -hmm. doesn't mean he's actually hurt there. Right. Maybe he's playing mind games with someone, you know, maybe he's got a little trick up his sleeve. You don't know. Right. So with, with that season kind of, I would, to me, did that feel like that second all American? Was that a little more to you just because of the, now we're back to normal. Mm -hmm. Now we've got guys that I know they've been training just as much as I have. They haven't Mm -hmm. had to skip around the country to find a spot. Did that kind of solidify even more? Because I would, I want to say your third one was like a, like a fucking statement. Like, yeah, yeah, guys, sure. suck it. I'm, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing this. Yeah, was that first one without COVID, all that stuff being around? Did that feel a little it, better? It did because there were a lot of people saying it was a fluke. Yeah, you know, obviously people. You've been dealing with that shit for a while, man. Always, always. I was like, after a while, I'm pretty sure it's not a fluke anymore. Like, I'm like, I'm telling you guys, I'm not that, I'm not overrated. Like, I've been, I've been winning pretty much forever. So, yeah, yeah, no, the second one felt so good. And some of those EIWA dudes and Ivy League guys who didn't get to wrestle saying it was a fluke that, you know, some of these dudes plays. It's like, hey, if I've learned anything about the NCAA tournaments, nothing's guaranteed. So it's like. Man, so the second one felt so good to get and, sure. and uh you know went out with a win too, taking mm-hmm. seven. So I was like, all right, I'm not, you know, yeah. the last placer. Nope. So yeah. yep, yep. That, that guy good. is right over there. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so what? Right. So let, we'll get past that now. We'll we'll get into your the, the last season here. Mm-hmm. Knowing that there, you know, again, there was so much that you've already been through, mm-hmm. and now this is your last year. Were you I, I want to say, were you more comfortable than ever? I mean, because like you said, you've been through mm-hmm. it how many times was there kind of a breath of relief? Like, just kind of like, all right, I'm just going to ride this. I'm just going to mm-hmm. practice as much as I can. Mm-hmm. I know what I got to do. You got Seth gross, you know, that yeah. they're able to practice with. Plus now you got a couple more guys up in the room. Some can, of the young guys, uh, yeah. yeah. Right. You yep. got some fresh meat in the room. You kind of right. throwing uh, uh, like a Nicola Rivera, yep. you know, guys Absolutely. like that throwing some curveballs at you oh, yeah having some fun with it were you yeah. having a little more fun this time around it was definitely a lot more fun yeah. um besides the weight cutting that's never fun but uh yeah it was it was definitely uh a mindset of making sure i'm healthy for mm-hmm. march um the whole season you know lost matches everybody you know obviously shouldn't lose and right and uh getting upset a couple times but it was always like i didn't get hung up on it because i'm like again yeah. i know what the past seasons have happened and what people do in march and Went in with the mindset of three days in March matter most. Um, just trying trying to stay healthy and attack it from a more professional lens. Um, you know, I was fortunate that school wasn't a big drag on me and sure. didn't yeah. have to worry about that too much. Um, taking care of my business, but you know, it wasn't super strenuating and and all that. So it's definitely a lot more fun and taking it kind of in a different role too. Like, okay, I'm a fifth year senior. We have a young team. Yeah, getting help these guys a lot kind of show them the ropes and how it should be done. Um, being like a team leader to the guys. Yeah. And it was a lot more fun, a lot different lens. And uh, yeah, for sure. You know, knowing it was the last run too, it was like, all right, you know, this is, this, this, this stuff is pretty tough and, and knowing I'm done soon is it, it felt good. I want to touch on the 125 pound weight class mm-hmm. in general this yeah. year. You guys were all over the place. Yep. 
you weren't any other you were one of the group that was mm-hmm. coming through and you guys are you guys are just it was everybody was beating some guy this weekend yeah another guy wasn't mckee that you pinned no he who, pinned me no no no. Who, who was the guy that you pinned it was a big one uh mccrone i pinned mccrone yes i pinned tanner jordan yes that was another yep. one but this yep. the guys were all over the place i yep. didn't mean to bring up mckee no, but you know did. whatever no i'm, the, the, I'm over it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like you, it, even you were you were having these wins and like i was i was getting ready like as mm-hmm. an ncaa is gonna be awesome yep because you don't know what's gonna happen right right, right. so is it hard i mean obviously you're gonna train the way you want to train you're mm-hmm. having a little bit more fun you're a little more loose and relaxed this year mm-hmm. did you find that that was like a like a kind of a i don't know like a challenge for you like all right okay mm-hmm. we got all these guys mixing it up you were right there with everybody yep. else i mean everybody's numbers were changing every right. week right right so it didn't matter who beat who mm-hmm. it was who was going to show up that weekend yeah exactly. you couldn't pick a champion exactly you know yeah and i'm sorry i, I and i'm going to get some hate for this <laughs> straight up matt ramos was not on my radar at all to win it at all no not at all Mm-hmm. I would have put you before him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I appreciate that. But that's that's kind of where things were because everybody was like, you pinned Spencer Lee. Like, you know, so did Piccinini. Where did he go? Yeah. You know, true. that's true. Someone right. got a hold of someone. They held on tight and they got it done. Right. right? That right. doesn't mean you're going to come back the next week and do the same thing. Yeah. I think this year that weight class kind of proved that same thing. Yeah. You know, like you weren't just going to come out and dominate every single right. person you wanted to. Right. So as you're kind of going through the season, you know, all this talk about whatever, and I'm sure there's not a ton of it that you pay attention to, but mm-hmm. really like, holy shit, this is going to be kind of a, kind of a season this year, you know, as far yeah. as just duel to duel, not even NCAAs. Yeah. Um, I didn't see a lot of stress on your fist. I saw the beard mm-hmm. get bigger, Oh yeah. but I didn't see the stress get anymore. I, you know, even like some of the losses or whatever, you're just like, mm-hmm. all right, man, you know, it's, yep. it is what it is. Are you finding yourself to be, um, a little, not a little way more matured? Mm-hmm. you know obviously you're getting older you said you've been there before mm-hmm. but the maturity level as far as taking a loss how did the losses hit you this year compared to like the year before yeah right? do you find it it would was it different each year like oh man i should have gotten that one but then the year after you're like that's all good I'm, yeah and it's the because i'm finding even mm-hmm. with state that yeah. all these duels yeah it's all practice it is for that it is so i think if people lose sight of that because mm-hmm. the, the team race and things like that right were you finding yourself to kind of realize that a little bit more as time got yeah you know came down the road just like hey man i went out and did my job tried my best mm-hmm. ncaa is what matters yeah you know i mean that first year all american kind of propelled it the next three years of yeah. like dude i mean i started the year oh and two yeah and then it's like nominal american yep. like yeah i'm understanding those losses don't really matter and it is pretty much practice you're just getting a feel of dudes and yep. you know kind of it's just scouting at that point Yep. Like, obviously, you don't want to lose. Well, right. But, right. you know, just scouting at that point and definitely feel more mature, like, going in that fifth year, like, all right, you know, take care of business this year. With how crazy 25 was, too, is, like, I didn't have to worry about one name or think about one name. Yeah. It was like, dude, I'm just going to train. Yeah. I'm going to show up and wrestle whoever is there, and I'm going to, you know, do my best to beat them. And it was a, a lot more loose. Yeah. You know, not, not worrying about, like, any one specific guy. Like, right. Obviously, I know who the top dogs were at the time mm-hmm. like you said like my match going in to purdue against mm-hmm. ramos like it was like okay i need to win this one i can be ranked number one in the country this and that and then i lost and i was like all right all right being ranked number one in the country is not as cool as winning a national title so right. like all right we're gonna you know we're gonna try and go get that thing and and you know worked out pretty well were you, you up know. as high as number five or three uh depend on the ranking i was two I that's think right on, on flow yeah. maybe yeah i was yeah. two so it was i don't know if they did it because of the antics knowing that we had to duel each other that week so it was a one <laughs> verse two and you know a headline that they could post yeah. but yeah yeah there's a lot of movement and not a lot of it like made sense so it no. also helped me like stay out of it too i was like who gives a crap right what right. you're ranked and well, especially like, in november even with these kids you know like mm-hmm. I, what liam's 20 on one he's 13 on another one and he's mm-hmm. eight on or nine on another one it's mm-hmm. like i don't understand where who's buying what yeah, like who's right. into what you right. know like i don't yeah. understand where they are they are they taking off season stuff and putting mm-hmm. freestyle into it so i would imagine like i and it's hard you know mm-hmm. I, I can imagine especially going to college you're pumped to be there you probably watch them a little bit more but then as you grew mm-hmm. like you just said like mm-hmm whatever yeah ncaa is what matters yeah man. this whole right. dual stuff whatever yeah. so that's why like the mckee thing didn't even stick out in my head as far as like a win loss <laughs> thing right yeah because it was so back and forth like yep. mckee got pinned a couple times before that and mm-hmm. then or or lost by five or six or yep. whatever yeah so it was very hard <laughs> 
do you even try to imagine who's going to take that number yeah, one spot? And I think right. that's kind of what was going on. But now as you got through the rest of the season, what I don't get, and I've always had questions on how, like what qualifies you for the NCAAs? So based on your season, I think you have to have like a 700 or above like winning record or winning percentage. Okay. Yeah, I think that's one of them. Um, Cause like, however they earn the allocations, I honestly don't even know. I just kind of no. like, I'm like, all right, cool. We got, they just let you know. Knock, yeah. Knock. <laughs> yeah, they're like, all right, big 10, yeah. 125. I think this year we had nine. It's like, all right. And even for me, I was like, all right, take top nine. Yeah. I automatically go. And I go win a national title. That was just like, <laughs> That's I, it. I don't even, I should probably know that, but I don't really know exactly what all goes into it Interesting. And, and all that. I know if, you know, win loss percentage is part of it, but the rest, I don't even know. Well, it just proves more that you're kind of on the mode of, I want to practice. I want to mm-hmm. go wrestle and I want to perform. Right. You know, and that's right. All you gave, I'm going to call you little guys, but all you little guys yeah. did that this year. Like yeah. it was fun to watch yeah. the whole season. Right. I was especially impressed, like I said, watching you grow coming from the high school season mm-hmm. to now and how you've evolved. I mean, mm-hmm. just in general, the wrestling, your attitude, mm-hmm. just seeing the different styles that you're kind of putting across the board. And, yep. but still being Barnett, you know, right. you're still right. doing the air still thing. pinning dudes. And, right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. right. I mean, you were, you were still just like you were in high school. I, I would say, and this obviously you're before Nicolar, but like you have that flair mm-hmm. with some of the stuff you do and you started mm-hmm. doing it on bottom, like you said. Yep. And I was like, Oh, yeah. Shit. yeah like there's an evolution here of <laughs> right. Barnett, right right so you, you kind of you wrap up your your college career you ended extremely well what was the placement again a uh, fourth. fourth fourth dude yeah. you know losing the last one whatever yeah that one, that one was a that, that was a bonus match right i was, I was trying to get a pin <laughs> I, was, uh, I was like it's my last college match i'm gonna go in yeah you know, obviously still trying to win yeah i was like kind of really want to pin this dude like, <laughs> like, that'd be pretty sweet cool way to go out right but, yeah. right ah, whatever and that's i think that's the best way i, I mm-hmm. honestly knowing that coming from and i'm going to expound on some of the harshness that you came from in high school mm-hmm. some of the people just talking shit and whatever it was but then mm-hmm. you grew from that and yeah knowing that you're just like you know i'm just gonna let this rip right like, who gives a shit about the placement after yep. that because you're having fun and you did it that way yep so you're getting done with school pretty soon mm-hmm it sounds like you're going to be around town for a little bit. Be around town, but you have started this thing. Yep. Complete so wrestler. Yep. Let's talk about that a little cool. bit. So you, the complete wrestler, was something we talked about a little bit before we started. Mm-hmm. The complete wrestler was something that sounds like you're trying to bring the whole gamut of what I guess a wrestler mm-hmm. should know about, mm-hmm. right? And it, what what better way to give it back to than the kids that are coming up, right? Exactly. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I in in my five years of wrestling college i think i've learned that you know like we've talked about like the losses don't get too low and the highs don't get too high and Mm -hmm. you know as i progress through my career is more focused on okay how my how's my diet how's my nutrition you know meeting with my nutritionist all the time strength and conditioning coach hey how are we do we lift today do we not lift today and what does it look like if i don't if i do what's the lift how are we dialing it into you know based on my injuries or what hurts how sore i am when i compete all that stuff. So dialing it on that end and talking to the, the, our sports psychologist, learning things from him. So that's kind of the approach I'm taking with this, with these camps is we're not just bringing in good clinicians to teach wrestling. We're still doing that. Yeah. Right. We still want to get better at wrestling, but in the breaks at lunch breaks, I'm not just, you know, send them out and you know, they're going to some ham and cheese, right. Ham and cheese sandwich. And, <laughs> you know, strap your shoes back up and go wrestle. Like we're going to be bringing in dudes, nutritionists, high level nutritionists, you know, at the university of Wisconsin, we did that last year. Yeah. Um, bringing in wrestling mindset guys, you know, I'm going to be there, you know, doing my spiel and, yeah. and feel pretty good about where I'm at with the whole wrestling mindset side of it. You know, knowing that, um, any dude can win if they believe in themselves. And, um, but we're bringing in a lot of different, you know, areas of, of focus, um, sports med, all that stuff. Yeah. To be able to talk to these kids about what it really means to be a college wrestler because I didn't have a lot of guidance going in. I was kind of like, all right, I'm gonna show up, and then yeah. they're like when I get there, they're like, oh, do this, do this, do this. I'm like, okay, well now I, you know, five years later, I didn't do a lot of those same things. It was like, okay, this is what works for me. Everybody's different, but hearing you know the stores and everything mm-hmm. that we're bringing to the table at at the camps is gonna be huge for kids, especially the high school kids looking to wrestle in college at whatever level yeah. they can kind of hear those stories and be like, okay, you know, maybe we can do this. And 
you know, the plan, the idea is to stay in touch with those kids as they go to college and helping them out, yeah. you know, how I can. And, okay. and, uh, yeah, I think of it as a whole human approach to wrestling, right? We're trying to make good employees, good wrestlers, um, good humans, healthy humans. Yeah. Um, we're not just teaching them technique you right? Know, again. Yeah, yeah. Still want to teach them, you know, high level technique, show them, you know, some of the funky stuff that I do and, <laughs> That's right. and bringing in other yeah. guys that, you know, are super solid and have had a lot of su success and let the kids hear, hear the stories and hear what it's like to be a college wrestler instead of just like, here's, you know, 20 moves. I, I got paid. I'm ahead of them. So. <laughs> so let's, let's talk a little bit about your, what, with what you're trying to bring. What do you think you're bringing that you think would have been helpful to you walking into a college room? Yeah, a lot of the sports, uh, the wrestling mindset side of it is huge. Um, understanding nutrition better. Um, you Did know. They just throw you like, hey, you got to make sure you make weight. So, yeah, I mean, I knew nothing. I knew nothing when I was in high school. I'd cut weight and yeah. you know, my post match or my post weigh in meal would be cheese and chocolate milk or whatever, <laughs> the crazy stuff, whatever I could yeah. think of. Right. Yeah. Whatever I could get my hands on. Yeah. And then a lot of me and my nutritionist about, all right, we're going to do, you know, how much fruit do we need to do after weigh-ins? How many ounces of fluid do we have yeah. you know, at a specific time? um within that time frame of you know and it was a lot different this year with the two hour weigh-in versus a one hour how oh, do we yeah. dial that in yeah um so and then what works for me what works for somebody else like my diet you know after a weight cut is different than you know dj Medes or mm -hmm. whoever it was on the team like we're all varying in that way so dialing it in like there is no one size sure. fits all everyone's different that. so yeah um timing of you know i'm a lightweight so i'm usually first match up so yep. i got even less time than these other dudes yeah that you know might have cover. three four hours to you know to wrestle and warm up times and it yeah there's a there's a coaches have their job of like okay this is how i did it yep. and then, so i think you can do it and then also having the resources of like nutritionists like, is like okay you know this i know goes well in your stomach you know you yeah. can gauge how you feel you know and that's why we do a lot of like practice weight cuts um before the season i don't think this year we made scratch at all but we made i want to say like plus two plus four plus six or something like that okay. like shrinking the body dialing it down and, mm -hmm. you know bono does a good job of like tapering it down not just saying like okay on this day you're making scratch weight you better be ready to wrestle like he's you know, gauging us down. Week so those week guys weekend. were paying attention to it with you for sure. Your coaches for were. Sure. So it wasn't yep. just like you're walking in the room and mm -hmm. they're just like, Hey, make sure you're 125 next week. Right. And then you're off to your own devices. Right. That's right. kind of what I was curious about is yeah. were there guys that were like, Hey, we know this is hard. Mm -hmm. We're here to help you kind of thing. Right. As far as, you know, maybe giving you some guidance, but you did have a nutritionist at, yep. at, at Madison. Yep. Okay. Yep. So our that we're helps. fortunate that the uh, the head of nutrition at Wisconsin is a wrestling guy. Oh, He's, nice. Yeah. So he was, um, I want to say he was like offered the job or something at the UFC dietitian. So he's a oh, real wow. deal. He's yeah. a real deal. Oh yeah. Um, knows okay. what he's talking about. And, um, yeah, works with us, works with our diets, what we like, what we don't like, yep, and, yep. you know, anything he can get in the building, you know, right on. we have our hands on. So, yeah. So what do you, do you have a website for that? <laughs> Not yet in the works. Okay. Um, using Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff for okay. it. And we'll be dropping the link to sign up soon. I'll, so. I'll make sure that once uh, this gets out, you know, yeah. especially on YouTube, we'll put the links to all that stuff in cool. there. Um, and then, so where do you, do you have any camps lined up right now? Yep. So we're doing one in Nakusa, one in Stratford, and then one in Bayport. Okay. So throughout the June, July months and, and, uh, all three or three day camps, wow. um, full days and, and ready to, you know, get our hands on some kids and help, you know, kind of give them a, a guideline of how they can approach the next, you know, July hits and yeah. they're in summer training still, but how we can be dialed in until November and, and in the off season. So you guys hanging out in like a camper out in the parking lot <laughs> no. with, with all those guys. Yeah. Like, you guys. So I, that's kind of a curious thing because I brought in some camp guys to like mm -hmm. aviators and stuff when Liam was there, brought in mm -hmm. Dan Dennis and things like that. Nice. But with the stuff that, especially that you're trying to bring to the kids, mm -hmm. like you're bringing nutritionists and stuff mm -hmm. you're bringing. So yep. like, I, I just out of curiosity, what's the cost to be able to bring you guys in? Yeah, so our uh, our cost for the three day camp with all those dudes coming in, and again, we'll uh, start name dropping in a couple weeks yeah, of yeah. the clinicians and be some 
pretty tough dudes that nice. I think people will be excited to see for sure coming in and then with nutritionists, sports psych, all that stuff coming in for the three days is two fifty. Okay. Um for wow. the yeah. So okay. that's you know, good. Yeah. Yeah. So um try and make it, you know easily accessible to, to yeah. people and obviously understanding that there's costs on on deck oh for, hands down for clinicians and hands all that down. so anybody yeah. bitches about prices about stuff i mean it, it's one thing if you're in like an event like a tournament mm -hmm. to gripe about something but when you got clinicians coming in like mm -hmm. they're they're coming in and spending their own time to come in and show you right. stuff like i've right. never of course a, a club wants to kind of shop around just see what they can afford sure. kind of thing but 100%. every dollar is worth it you know what i'm 100%. saying so even bringing in some of the camp guys that we brought into you know any club that we were at that always worth the money man. Mm -hmm. so anybody that's got questions or issues with it take it up with yourself because it's <laughs> seriously it's worth it these guys are bringing knowledge that you can't get anywhere else mm -hmm. so when you are done at the end of the day what are you looking to do obviously this would be i would love to see you get mm -hmm. this to take off and you guys are That'd all over sweet. the country with it yeah so but what you, you got a what was it business you said for your major uh personal finance personal yep. finance but then yep. it was entrepreneurship entrepreneurship yep what is your goal to, uh, I guess, to sustain? Because sounds like you're going to be sticking around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear. Like, I think I interviewed someone that said, "I'm going to do insurance sales," and I'm mm -hmm. going to do this. I'm like, that's kind of an interesting taking what you want to do as an insurance sales. Yep. But uh, if this wasn't to work out, what what are your interests? Like, what do you get into? Yeah. So funny enough, I'm doing. I'll be a financial advisor. Yeah. Doing insurance stuff right now. Oh, so, insurance. Yep. No kidding. So, so I'm doing, you know, the exams and all that to be certified in Wisconsin. Yeah. For insurance. And what's then I'll the be draw? For a lot of guys are doing insurance the time freedom really? freedom of time yeah for sure i mean okay. we don't we don't have set hours like obviously i got to answer to somebody well, sure yeah but yeah yeah it, there's a lot of freedom that that's involved i think uh, okay for me financial advising is a lot like wrestling where you get what you put in okay um, okay you know the more outreach i do the more work the cold calls all that yeah you know, mumbo jumbo but you know <laughs> i can kind of earn my keep by you know if i'm you know dialed in and work hard and learn a lot ask questions same yeah. thing as wrestling and you don't get the freedom because of that so sorry yeah. to all you insurance sales guys out there i didn't mean to put you out or nothing but it's, <laughs> it just seems like that's the big draw to all these guys that business mm -hmm. management or whatever it is They're like yeah i'm really focusing on insurance right now i'm like you're focusing on what mm -hmm. okay because yeah. i think i mean if business when i think business management i'm like you guys could start your own thing doing whatever you wanted right to, you know right. And, and just knowing where you come from and what you've been through mm -hmm. like you could start whatever you wanted to right. and be successful but i hear insurance a lot yeah like, okay yep. maybe i'm missing the ball on something <laughs> i better get an insurance or something. Yeah, right that's awesome right well good for you and so like this year we've seen a lot of guys kind of float out of the room mm -hmm. right we saw hamity go to mm -hmm. oklahoma well he's always wanted to wrestle there was he on his last year too is that kind of a last so year he's, he's no he's no? not graduated yet he's going into his fourth year okay so okay i don't know what the the plan because he's got a red shirt too so i don't know if he's oh, he does on. he does yep so he was you know he's a young kid too he's i think 18 he's you know young uh yeah. i want to say june birthday yeah so i mean he's a young dude That's and liam too not, i don't even think he's 21 yet like he's <laughs> he's young he's young he's going into his fourth year of college he's not even 21 yet so. yeah yeah so i'm i'm gonna ask you a couple questions here towards mm -hmm. the end you know we kind of and i know what to touch and what not to touch here <laughs> so with with go you're gonna be done with wisconsin right mm -hmm. now do you plan on kind of going back and helping the room at yeah, all we'll see we'll see what they I mean, want right i'm i'm open to it right? yeah. i want to help the next generation big wisconsin guy and right you know, that's you know right. touches on the complete roster too that's why yeah i got three in wisconsin right i you know right. could go down to illinois and you know or iowa midwest anywhere but i want wisconsin to be good yeah i want us to keep you know and we're getting good with awa and all Damn the right we and are czar and yep. rt and all that i mean we're getting yeah. We're getting real good. We're on the map, and and I want to keep that going. So speaking of coaching, you kind of eyeing up any coaching things here? I'll be around. I'll yeah. be around. Yeah, I got some things in the works. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, yep. Okay. Now I'll be coaching in some degree, no matter what, and whether it's privates or practices, drop-ins, clinics, camps, all that. I'll be around. Do so. you have like like five or six interests of places where you'd want to coach? high school um, wise college yeah i mean college would be would be the goal I coaching know. in college um you know it it in the at the end of the day it is a business so that's the side of it that for sure that i don't like playing too much the business side of it yeah um just want to help kids um be able to make a living doing it um but yeah i mean a lot of interest a lot of opportunities and you know i'm curious about where it'll go yeah. how things play out around the country and yeah 
with NIL. You never know what's happening. And, and, uh, yeah, you never, opportunities. absolutely never know what's happening no, with NIL right no, now. No, right. So that's where, you know, obviously there's a lot of people that are asking about, you know, what's going on with the Wisconsin room. What's going mm -hmm. on? Obviously, we know that everybody has their own plan, right? right. Everybody's got their own thing going on. Mm -hmm. We can hear speculation about certain things. And that's, and I told you this before we got on mm -hmm. this. That's all us guys on the outside can do is right. speculate. Exactly. And that's it. Exactly. So there's a lot of questions on the forum, and I think I'd be a dickhead mm -hmm. if I didn't put it out here. No, that's fair. But what's do you, and I know you can only say so much, but as far as the, the room, reading the room that you're in, mm -hmm. how do you feel next year is going to go and maybe the subsequent years down the road as far as the coaching staff? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the AD. I'm right? not, not, you know, I that's don't make the decisions. And, yep. and again, you know, I think we have a really young team, but you know, I might be biased because they were my practice partners. But right. Nicklar dropping down to 25, Zan Fugit potentially at 33, Brock Bob's in, you know, seeing how that lineup goes. Dylan yeah. Foy's in the mix too, nice. um, around there. So, uh, we got Condon, we got dudes like Meckler, he's a vet, um, you know, yeah. in his ways, trusting in himself. And yeah. up and down the lineup, we got, we got a young team. Um, I'm excited to see how they do next year and, you know, not a lot of returning NCAA points or nothing like that. Um, Correct. A lot of opportunities. Yeah. A lot of opportunities there, and you know, wish them nothing but the best. And you know, I think I think we can see some big things happen from that young group. I, I don't want to bring the young guys down. So if you guys do watch this, just just <laughs> hold on a second. But there are some people concerned. You know, mm -hmm. there are some people watching from mm -hmm. the sidelines. Us speculators. Yeah. Or watching from the sidelines, thinking. Yeah what the fuck is going to go on yeah. next year? We just had yeah. a Hammity leave. You're graduating. Yeah. So you're done in the room. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say you just mentioned four five, six guys that mm -hmm. have potential to do the things right. they need to. Right. And a lot of people are questioning the coaching as far as, and, and again, you did your thing, you know, mm -hmm. you, had, you progressed and did the things that you needed to do, but a lot of people throw this out like, well, I don't think they can develop this guy and they can develop this guy. I think there are certain coaches that know how to do certain things and mm -hmm. certain coaches that excel at doing certain things yep. they're trying to figure some other stuff out right, right. um am I, I again i'm not a coach um mm -hmm. i don't know what it takes to coach a big 10 team mm -hmm. i don't have the knowledge of coaching right. a big 10 team um but i think if i were an athlete i think i'd be a little worried mm -hmm. um as far as like because i mean it, it goes year to year right, right. what the hell's gonna happen here right and guys reaching out to each other you know mm -hmm. um i think the the read around the room reader sorry read, <laughs> read around the room <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> playing words uh I, I think that people are still excited there are a lot of people that yeah. still have high hopes of mm -hmm. what we could see from the badgers next year and people can hate me i've been a hawkeye fan since i was five mm -hmm. it's just the way it goes mm -hmm. so i don't necessarily look at it that way i look at it from an outsider's view of like well here's what's happened the past four or five years you know mm -hmm. you've had some of these guys that were really strong wrestlers coming in mm -hmm. i think a lot of people question the development of developmental ability mm -hmm. of what's going on in the room right um as far as what you're concerned with obviously you're not going to be in the room that much mm -hmm. anymore you want to help you know grow your business and do the things you're going um mm -hmm. with a complete wrestler do you see as far as just your site do you see that this this coaching staff goes on for the next couple of years so yeah i mean definitely i could see it happening um the contracts you know, there again, so. right yeah so again you know i'm not the ad right i don't i don't I, i'm a speculator now too so, yeah right you know, i'm not in that sphere anymore but uh i think that i'm i've talked to the coaches too recently and you know yeah. really have been open to them and they've been open to me the last five years about how we keep developing as a program yeah and they're you know open to anything and sure you know they're they're definitely making changes for the better mm -hmm. um it sounds like and again i'm not in there so i don't see it yeah you know, now but um i think there's a lot of opportunities um yeah. we'd be mistaken if we didn't you know take those opportunities um and use them and you know we saw the NSA performance and yeah. the, the season this year and it's, it's just a lot of room for opportunity and being optimistic about it and where we're at and yeah. you know trying to develop those guys and trying you know we're doing through my five years we've definitely changed um the course of how they've tried to develop guys and they're trying new things and doing more of like kind of a more of a whole human approach too about our personality tests we've done those and you know meet with our nutritionist more and diving yeah. into some of those other aspects and and i, I think of it the coaching staff is um as like a pie okay and you're trying to get you know 100 percent of that pie filled and how can we take 
reader strengths and bono strengths and Seth strengths and Garrett strengths and make that a hundred percent pie. Right. And, yeah. and right now there's, I think there's some overlap on, on that pie. I don't think we're at a hundred percent. I don't know if any coaching staff is at a hundred percent. Right. No, but trying to get as close to that as, as it can, can is yeah. huge. And I know there's a lot of uh, emphasis on trying to make that a thing and grow the program and, you know, sure. and, and we're also learning a lot too with NIL and transfer Dude, portal and it has changed the stuff. landscape. It, man. It, it's huge. I mean, it was already a business to a degree. Yeah. Now it's only like almost only a business, right? There's a lot of money involved and which is great for the athletes. I absolutely love on it. And I, well, think, yeah, hell yeah, man. You know, did you get hit up with any kind of like, Hey, uh, saw what you did last year. Um, you want to come here? You yeah, there's a little tampering. poaching. There's a little tampering going on. Was for there? sure, I'm not going to out any programs. Well, no, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah was, so was it the coaches or, the, or were there athletes reaching out to you? It was a uh, little, well, no direct conversation with coaches. Yeah, so yeah, I don't, right. I don't know the ins and outs, and I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know <laughs> what's legal or not. But right, uh, yeah, right. there was some. Uh, hey, I know you know this guy. This guy's going to call you and be like, "All right, this is what the what's on the table." Oh, and, okay. Yeah, but you which, but you stayed. I said there was well, nothing enticing enough to get you out of the grasp of the badger claws. No, man. I was there for four years and wanted to finish it out, you know, at Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, you know, I have families here. There's a yeah. reason I decommitted from North Carolina when I was a junior <laughs> to, to come to Wisconsin. I want to be close to my family. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm engaged. My fiance lives in Wisconsin, you know, up in the Valley and Liam. Didn't, didn't want to leave too far. Liam kind of asked me about this. He's like, well, you think you think Eric got any NIL offers? I mean, I'm sure he did. I was mm -hmm. like, but he's on his last year. Right. You're going to uproot yourself to. Right. Unless you already had like, and that's the only way it would happen in my eyes. If you had coaching interests someplace mm -hmm. else that, that you were getting an offer from, why would you change? Right. You know, why would right. you leave? So you yeah. stayed in Wisconsin. So that's yep. even sweeter. Yeah. Some people, some people want to chase the bag and, you know, I don't blame them for wanting mm. to go get paid. If it's, you know, they don't make the rules, right? No. They're just, they're just going to get Play paid. by them. Yeah. And then, you know, wrestling is not a huge money sport. So if you can get paid doing it, yeah, go do it. Yeah. We don't yeah. have a WWE for NCAA wrestlers, right. you know? Like, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they tried it a couple no times. professional, right? It didn't work. Right. So yeah, you, you have the complete wrestler. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're putting down roots in the Fox Valley here mm -hmm. from what I hear. So that's mm -hmm. even better. Yep. Um, any thoughts on opening a club? Yeah, I've thought about it. Um, we'll see what happens. And okay. you know, I want to give back to the to the community that helped me and where I grew up in. And it's awesome. And we'll see. Um, definitely gonna take it slow and not, you know, jump into it too much. I'm obviously starting a job soon so we'll see how that that whole thing goes and a lot of responsibility there and and uh but definitely a lot of camps and you know looking to do privates clinics all that stuff i'm glad you're bringing it back man yeah it's I'm good excited. to see it's I'm it's excited. good to see that we'll have something uh, another guy because as far as i know like you know cleaver's around once in a while mm -hmm. but then we got uh we have robert lee you know, you yep. came from Pitt. Now we got you here. We yep. got a couple other guys that, yep. that were in the NCAA. So yep. it's really good to have this now, I think, like just mounding up. Mm -hmm. This Mound mounding of knowledge. Yeah. For sure. So for it's, sure. it's really cool that you're bringing it to the kids mm -hmm. like that. Um, it, Guys, again, look for the Complete Wrestlers on mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, I believe, too. Yep. Twitter. Yep um whatever who he probably got on tiktok too who knows yeah. <laughs> but look on all social media for the complete wrestler uh with eric barnett um obviously he'll have information on those pages he's got mm -hmm. clinicians he's going to be lining up so pay attention stay tuned mm -hmm. um I, you know we've been going for about a little over an hour there and you go. we're gonna that talk a quick hour it was a quick hour <laughs> you know and that's i i think I appreciate the guys, especially, you know, like guys like you coming on mm -hmm. and I try to keep the questions as professional sure. as possible. Yeah. So hopefully the forum's happy <laughs> that I got some <laughs> I of those got questions. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whatever they wanted out of it somewhat. Right. But I, I appreciate you guys and the time that you guys do take out to do this yeah, stuff of course. because of course. I want to get you guys out there as much as possible with the name and the st especially the stuff you guys are doing now, you know, mm -hmm. post-graduation. Right. I mean, that's big. You yep. want to have a good leg up on. I am sure. definitely not Bashamania or Willie that thousands of people watch, but at least people around here, I know mm -hmm. where you're coming to. And For I know sure. watch this. So sure. um, it's exciting to have you back. Absolutely. I'm going to lead us out with some music. And you and I are going to cool. talk a little bit more yeah. once we're done here, because cool. we got some training planning. to do. <laughs> so uh, to everybody else, peace out. Thanks for watching, Appreciate but we it. are done. It's been Eric Barnett, Barnett, three time all American man for the Badgers. Let's go. All right. Mm -hmm.